if the Hebrew did mean written documents, nothing about that passage points to the Book of Mormon or the Mormon religion. Hello everyone, my name is Angela and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I'm an evangelical Christian and I love apologetics and I plan on making a lot more faith-based videos in the future so if you're interested in that kind of content then you should definitely subscribe. But today we're going to be talking about the Book of Mormon in the Bible. For my Latter-day Saint friends who are watching, I love you guys, um, thank you so much and I always want to have this disclaimer in the beginning of these kind of videos and just saying that I'm not here to judge you guys, condemn you, disrespect you. I'm just here to have a conversation and share with you my thoughts on what your church teaches. And maybe as an individual, you don't believe in these things, but again, I am judging the religion itself, not the people who are in the religion. And if you're a Christian and you're watching this and you're like, eh, I don't know any Mormons or this is kind of irrelevant because I know the Book of Mormon isn't in the Bible, but this is really good knowledge to have because you never know when Latter-day Saint missionaries are gonna come to your door and they're gonna show you this. I guarantee you, they're going to show you this passage in the Bible. So it's so good to have this knowledge and be prepared. The missionaries in Utah and missionaries that have came to my apartment before, like, the first thing they do when I mention that I'm a Christian is they'll bring out the Bible and they point to this prophecy. It's like their go-to. And at first, when they read this prophecy, you're kind of like, hmm, you know, this could be the Book of Mormon. And then you're like, it kind of will catch you off guard if you're not prepared. Let's start with reading Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 15 through 22 in the King James Version. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel and his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not shew us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. If you look in their Bible, there are chapter headings that you won't find in normal traditional King James Bibles. It's um, commentary that the Latter-day Saint Church has put in there essentially. On their website, you can find all of their standard works, including the King James Bible with the Latter-day Saint commentary at the beginning of each chapter. The chapter heading says Ezekiel is shown the valley of dry bones Israel will inherit the land in the resurrection the stick of Judah the Bible and the stick of Joseph the Book of Mormon will become one in the Lord's hand the children of Israel will be gathered and cleansed David the Messiah will reign over them they will receive the everlasting gospel covenant from the chapter heading you can already see where this is going they believe that the stick of Judah represents the Bible and the stick of Joseph represents the Book of Mormon and one day the two will become one and they will have the Latter-day Saint Gospel, the Everlasting Gospel Covenant as referred to in the chapter heading. Is that what this passage in Ezekiel 37 is saying? Is this really referring to the Book of Mormon? So let's find out. If you go back to Ezekiel 37 and you read it in depth, the passage explains itself. Verses 21 and 22 explain specifically what the two sticks represent. And the two sticks, 
as you can see, they represent the northern and the southern kingdoms coming as one nation. This does not seem to indicate the coming together of two written texts um, or a written record, but instead is referring to the joining together of the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel, which we know historically actually did happen. If you go and research the original Hebrew for this passage, the Hebrew word etz, spelled E-T-S, um, is used describing sticks. The word etz in Hebrew is defined as a tree from its firmness, hence wood, plural sticks um, used in the context of a carpenter, gallows, helve, pine, plank, staff, stalk, stick, stock, timber, tree, and wood. I got these definitions from Strong's Hebrew Dictionary Concordance. This is a really great reference to have um, in studying the ancient Hebrew and Greek that the Bible was originally written in. It really helps you understand what the author was trying to convey when he wrote it. In this Hebrew dictionary, it also gave other scriptures that the Hebrew word etz was used in. For example, Genesis 1:12, And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. The word etz is used for the word tree in that verse. Another example is Exodus chapter 26, verse 15, and Proverbs 26, 20. If you go on that concordance, you can see a lot more examples of the Hebrew word etz being used in its context. All of these scriptures are referring to trees, or sticks or wood and are not indicating any sort of written record. The Hebrew word for a scroll or a book or other written text is Megillah. The Hebrew word Megillah can be found in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. So clearly, that scripture is specifically referring to a book with the written words. Another Hebrew word for a scroll or a book is sefer. That can be found in Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. Um, another Hebrew word for writing or record is kathab. And I am probably pronouncing all of these Hebrew words wrong, so please don't be mad at me. That can be found in Ezekiel chapter 13, 9, and I'm not gonna go through all of these examples, but if you go and look for yourself, in the context, each of these verses are referring to books or scrolls with words on them. These Hebrew words for book or for scroll or for written record are not used in Ezekiel chapter 37. As you can see, the author of Ezekiel used Hebrew words for scroll, book, and record previously in earlier chapters of the book of Ezekiel. He knew how to use those words in context. So in Ezekiel chapter 37, if he wanted to convey that this was a scroll or a written record, why didn't he? Because he used the word etz, which was not signifying a written document. If the author of Ezekiel meant that these sticks were referring to a scroll or a written document, he would have used the Hebrew words for it, such as Megillah or Sefer or however you pronounce them because I can't pronounce them right. Some LDS commentary has argued that Ezekiel um, really did mean to use the word sticks. The argument is that they would use these thin uh, leaves and coat them with wax and use those as writing tablets. Um, or writing boards. Biblical scholar, non-LDS scholar, um, Brian E. Keck, he says that in Hebrew, the traditional sem semantic range is correspondingly broad, but again, the word basically means tree, wood, sticks, branches, firewood, and timber for building. Occasionally, it can refer to objects made of wood, such as a pole, the handle of an axe, gallows, idols, and vessels. Moreover, in post-biblical Hebrew, the term es, also etz, um, again refers to trees, different types of wood, a pole, the gallows, and a wooden pot ladle. Therefore, as far as our current lexical knowledge goes, the Hebrew es does not refer to a writing board or document. Even if in Ezekiel 37, the word etz was meant for a scroll or a document, wasn't the Book of Mormon written on golden plates anyways? Even though we've already seen that in Ezekiel 37, the sticks were literal sticks, not written documents. 
even if the Hebrew did mean written documents, nothing about that passage points to the Book of Mormon or the Mormon religion. Any new religious group would come along and say that the text was actually their text and it was coming along with the Bible because nothing in that passage specifically points to Joseph Smith, Book of Mormon, the Americas, etc. Another issue that Latter-day Saints have is that nowhere in the Book of Mormon does it say that this record is about the descendants of Ephraim. The Book of Mormon is supposed to be a record of the descendants of Manasseh. Alma 10.3 reads, And Ammonadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. Just to make things more clear, I added this diagram of the family tree of Abraham. And um, as you can see down at the bottom in the red oval that I added, you can see Joseph and his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing those wrong. Ezekiel 37 in the Bible mentions the stick of Joseph in the hand of Ephraim, which um, Latter-day Saints claim is the Book of Mormon. And the problem arises because apparently the Book of Mormon was written by the descendants of Manasseh, not Ephraim. I also saw some LDS commentary that's saying that the stick of Joseph was directly referring to Joseph Smith. But Joseph is a very, very common name. And again, nothing about that passage is specifically pointing to Joseph Smith. For example, prophecies about Jesus are very specific and very clear that only Jesus could fulfill. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Isaiah chapter 53, which is a prophecy about the Messiah, AKA Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled every single one of those prophecies. So last week I did a video about my top 10 favorite books. If you haven't seen that, should watch it but I mentioned um, the case for Christ and in this it actually has a section talking about the probability that a random person was able to fulfill the exact prophecies of Jesus this is on page 59 in my version imagine the entire world every bit of dry land on the planet covered with white tile that is one inches square with a gold star painted on the bottom of just one of the tiles then picture a person being allowed to wander for a lifetime around all seven continents. He would be permitted to bend down only one time and pick up a single piece of tile. What are the odds it would be the one tile with the gold star on its reverse side? One chance in a hundred million billion. The same is just eight of the Old Testament prophecies coming true in any one person throughout history. As a math person, that like blows my mind. Just the fact that Jesus fulfilled eight of these prophecies is one chance in a hundred million billion. Even if Ezekiel 37 was a prophecy, it is very vague in comparison to the prophecies of Jesus that are very specific and very, very improbable that someone else could fulfill. While as even if Ezekiel 37 was a prophecy about a text, which it isn't, the Hebrew word etz is not written words, even if it was, any religious group could come on and say, oh, our book is about the descendants of Ephraim and this is our text coming together with the Bible. Any religious group could do that. In conclusion, I do not think Ezekiel chapter 37 is a prophecy of the Book of Mormon. I really hope that this was helpful to you and I really encourage you to go look at the Hebrew dictionary that I linked below and go look at the context of the Hebrew word for scroll, book, um, stick, all of that good stuff. Um, you can find it below, research it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I'll also link below some really interesting articles and videos about this subject because again, this is one of the prophecies that um, Mormons will be very quick to point you to and hopefully Christians, you now have a better idea of what to say in defense of what the Bible actually teaches. If you have any additional thoughts, I would love to hear those below, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a blessed day.